Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I am Plume Noir and you may hear some fireworks going off or my cat scratching at the door. I've had to close everything up so and as I mentioned in last night's video, it's really hot so I'm kind of sweaty and there's no fans going on. Uh, but today, for the first time in four months, four months, I got to the comic shop. You know, because of the whole coronavirus, you know, things being shut down. And before I talk about this, you know, I made a reference to this in last night's video um, about the current comic book industry. You know, it basically, the whole economy, you know, with everything going on with COVID, things being shut down. And the comic book industry was not very healthy before all this happened. And now it is... <laughs> it's pretty bad. I was talking with the comic shop owner. Um, I only went to my main store. I didn't go to my backup. Uh, but I went to my main store, the one that you know I have my pull list at. And he was telling me, it's gotten pretty bad. He said, in his words, we haven't gotten to the point of needing charity yet, but we're getting really close. So it's not, not good. And I, I have to admit that... Uh, I haven't been too excited about going to pick up uh, any books, uh, even my pull list. And you know me, I like to go in and browse and check out things. You know, a lot of things I do on my channel are things that I've just pulled off the rack that caught my eye or things that I know that other people aren't going to cover. Um, there's a lot of that in my, you know, it's it's easy to do like America Chavez, but, you know, the other smaller books... Uh, you know, they don't get as much uh, coverage. I do like to at least, you know, show what else is out there. And as I was looking through the racks, and like I said, my main comic shop doesn't really over order. You know, they pretty much only get some of the main stuff. And unless you, you know, request it, you know, so that they can put it in your pull list, they don't keep a lot out there. But as I was going through the racks, you know, I, I saw, you know, for example, Lois Lane. And, you know, her series, which I was covering for a while, and it just got to be too bad for me. And something like that that I would continue to read, if not just for the channel, whether to laugh at how bad it was or to at least, you know, tell people if it is bad, stay away from it because it was looking to be pretty bad. I just had no interest. None. And this reminds me of a time... In the early 2000s, I've read comics, you know, pretty much all my life, going back to the late 70s. And there has been one time in my life where I pretty much dropped out of comics, you know, with a couple, you know, uh, exceptions. And that was in the early 2000s, and that was when my son was born. And, you know, new parents, you don't really have a lot of time. There were a couple comics I was reading, but that was it. It wasn't until he got to be a little bit older. After a couple years, I finally was able to jump back in. But at that point, I was able to jump back in. And, you know, the stuff that I missed was some good stuff. I was able to catch up on things. In this pandemic, I have not been really missing much. Now, I know there was still stuff on Comixology, and I've mentioned before, I don't like Comixology, you know, if I have the alternative. You know, if I can actually get the physical book, I would much rather do that. And especially right now, when the comic shops need that, you know, I want to keep the comic shops alive. And I've actually just been going through between having, a, you know, my Amazon Prime with Kindle Unlimited and my DC Universe subscription. I've been going through and reading stuff that I missed, uh, stuff that, uh, you know, rereading a few things. And yeah, I went back and the last thing I read uh, was um, the first six issues of the Darth Vader series, the Star Wars. Uh, I think I read that before. And I went back and reread that. Uh, you know, I just, I've just been picking and choosing, going through uh, some stuff on the DC Universe. I went and read the um, the Superman. Um, uh, oh God! When the New Fifty Two, when they brought back a uh, Superman Rebirth, I went back and I read that because I missed it when it came out. I I knew what was going on, but I went back and I've actually been catching up on older stuff. 
you know, when all this happened and they started announcing things like the new New Warriors, it, it was so easy. Everyone was talking about it. I figured I'd just wait till I had the issue in hand. And everything coming up has just been almost a parody of what good comics can be. And the creators have just been getting worse. In fact, I was just reading just today that someone is accusing Jeff Johns of sliding into her DMs when she was just 17. Now, is Jeff Johns going to be canceled based on one person's claim with no substantiation? Uh, I don't know. That's just... Not only is that the way that uh, the, the current uh, social climate is, I guess you could say, it's the way the current industry is, especially. And there's a whole lot of... Uh, pettiness and with the creators i've complained about it in the past you know especially how people whose books i've enjoyed that they tend to be either really negative or some some of them have me blocked you know leah williams has me blocked i've never even you know been able to interact with her and it's just been getting to the point where i'm like why am i rewarding these people why am i doing this and you know I still love comics. I still love the medium. And there are even even creators who say and do stupid things can still put out, you know, good comics. Yeah, you know, I, I always try and separate the art from the artist. There's only a couple that I just can't bring myself to do that with. But after a while, and you see people with this whole COVID-19 bringing out the panicked you know, state of them finally realizing that the industry is crumbling. They're finally realizing that the emperor has no clothes and they're starting to panic. And I'm at the point, I don't even care anymore. So that has been my long winded thing. I'm going to keep going there. There are a few different things I've been working on, but, but this all dovetails really nicely into this. Negan Lives. This is a one-shot, which I'm really happy to have. Now, remember what I was just saying about not caring anymore? It's books like this that make me glad I go back into the shop. Now, this is a one-shot that was kind of announced, I think, only like maybe three weeks ago. And plus, it's a really cool thing where Allard and uh, Kirkman are doing this basically for charity. It's, it's a charity thing. Um, they paid... For the book, you know, they're handling all the costs, you know, sending it to the comic shops. The comic shops get to keep 100% of the profits. There's not a digital version of this un until the scanners get a hold of it, of course. But um, it's only physical. And there were some uh, variant covers, I believe. I only saw this one, uh, which I believe is the main cover. But this is a one-shot. It's a charity to help the comic shops when they need it most. So, you know, good on Kirkman, you know, good on them for that. This issue is obviously Negan Lives. If you remember at the end of um, the very last Walking Dead issue, 193, it ends with Kirkman saying, you know, a P.S. Negan Lives. Well, <laughs> as you see, Negan Lives here, which kind of becomes arc wars with something at the end, which I'll come to in a minute. This takes place uh, pretty much around the ending of... Uh, of the Walking Dead series. Think of it more like 192, before the time skip. Uh, at this point, you know, spoilers. But when we see Negan, you know, he just kind of goes off and lives on his own. In the time skip, we know that he's living on his own, you know, not talking to anyone. And this is basically what happened to him. Because if you read the last issue, pretty much all the main characters got some type of closure. You know, they got some kind of focus, except for Negan. You find out in this issue, at the end, you know, talk, uh, Kirkman talking that Negan was supposed to die by Maggie. Maggie was supposed to kill him. Uh, issue that I don't remember, 168 maybe. Um, when she ran into him, you know, she had to make gunpoint. She was going to kill him. And it wasn't until uh, Charles Allard uh, told him, no, you know, basically, don't do that. And they came up with the, the better ending where Negan lives. And so this is going to, this issue takes a look at that time when he's on his own. I'm not going to go into it because it's, it's just a one shot. Um, and I don't really want to go into too much, but man, you realize how much you miss Negan. You know, it starts off open where he's just, 
<laughs> being Negan, you know, he's got that crazy eye, you know, he's that guy wouldn't come back. It almost seems like he's talking to the reader. Um, you know, I hate to reveal my plans ahead of time. I prefer to keep people guessing, but you should know I'll probably keep coming back to every one, every last one of you. Sorry, F's is gone. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, it almost seems at first like he's starting the reader, you know, talking, ha, ha, I'm back. But you expect to turn the page and he's going to be threatening someone who's coming after him. No, he's picking flowers. Yeah. And, uh, but you're effing flowers, so what the effing F do you care? Kind of laughing and you get to see this. This is what's been missing. You know, Negan was so over the top. And, you know, he did horrible, horrible things, which he does make reference to in this issue. Um, and at, in issue 100 of The Walking Dead, when basically the all-out war was settled and he was coming around to Rick's side, you know, before Rick put him in the prison, before the first uh, time skip. You can see Negan, he's a broken man. And this kind of follows him on that he wishes he was crazy because he would love to hear voices. He's alone. He has no one. He knows that he screwed up so badly. And during the Walking Dead series, when he was trying to get back into Rick's good graces, you know, no one would believe him. He knew Rick wouldn't believe him, which is why he had to go after Alpha and bring back her head. That was, you know, his showing that, hey, I'm on your side. And But what happens to a person when they've fallen so far that no one will believe them? No one would ever trust them again, which is what happened with Negan. It makes him such an interesting character, not just his over-the-top stuff. So the fact that he didn't really get any closure, eh, granted, you, know, you see he's still separated from everyone else. Um, but that's just it. He is separated. He has no contact. Carl drops off supplies. That's it. But, you know, he wasn't really expected to live to the end. So it was easy to fill in that without having to make any changes to the storyline. Which, unfortunately, by having him live, you know, at a last second decision, almost kind of ruined it. Because he was pretty much written out of the series at that point. And so we have some of his reflection, you know, basically talking, you know, uh, about his wife Lucille. And, you know, the anger of the situation. Until he finds he's got someone in his home. You know, a woman has broken in and wants some food. And I'm going to stop right there because this is Walking Dead. Um, it does take a turn and you could probably... I'll be honest, when I saw this here, I knew where it was going. So, um, nothing really major shocking, but it is a nice, enjoyable story. We do get to see Negan here, just being Negan, but we have a more... Uh, the the redeemed Negan, or at least the Negan on the path of redemption. And what's sad is that this is a one-shot, because it's set up not quite on a cliffhanger, but it sets up a nice storyline, which, of course, Kirkman could come back to at any point. I kind of wondered, I don't know if I mentioned this in my review of 193, but I kind of wondered if the way he... Kirkman left it at the end of the issue where he said P.S. Negan lives. I kind of wondered if he did leave that open so that if he wanted to come back to the Walking Dead universe, he could do it through Negan. You know, go back to before the time skip and follow Negan on his adventures. There's still a lot you could do. And but, you know, Kirkman had been doing the series for 15 straight years. You know, he was running out of stories with that you know particular group. He's probably getting tired you know, a little bit of time, rejuvenation, he could probably come back. He left the door, and he's left the door open on this as well, that he can come back. And I'll be honest, I want to see Negan's um, mission after this because it sets up perfectly for that. And, yeah, I, I enjoyed this book. And one other thing, he does talk a little bit. There is a little bit of a story here in the back. But I do want to get to the last page where he talks you know, try not to show the last page. It's not really anything spoilery. You see his face. Um, but he does talk about how Allard saved him, uh, saved Negan, that is. And Kirkman claims he did not intend to do this. He did not set this up with the idea of coming back. He claims that this was um, 
all, you know, brought up because of the whole COVID thing and got him thinking, which of course, you know, the COVID thing going on, Kirkman probably is kicking himself for ending his story about uh, uh, a zombie apocalypse right before a pandemic, right? So <laughs> it's kind of neat. But there is one other really neat thing that I said I'd circle back around to. His PS here, Clementine Lives. Now, as you know, Clementine has been in all the Walking Dead Telltale games. Um, she was, a, you know, the star of two of them. You know, main character in all of them. Eh, arguably three. You know, she really was. That was more Javier. But um, she was, of course, you know, pretty much the face of the Walking Dead. Uh, Telltale, later Skybound games. And there have been... Talk, there has been talk lately of Skybound doing another Walking Dead game, uh, continuing on after the final season. So, is he hinting to that? You know, maybe Clementine will make an appearance. Eh, it'll be hard to make her a main character, I think, after what happened in the final season. No spoilers, but this could also be just the fact that Clementine, as the face of the Walking Dead, um, I guess you call it Skybound, the, the Telltale sort of games, that, that, that series still lives. So that's a nice little shout out there. And this issue, enjoyable. I loved it. I love this book. The only thing I would say bad about it is that it's not the first of a new series and that there's no plans that he claims right now to continue on with the series. And since this was only announced just a couple weeks ago and then sent out, you know, to the retailers, um, it, he could easily be in plans right now to have the, the next little series. Even a six-issue arc would be really nice. So I, I love this book. I, just because I love Negan's character, um, <laughs> any chance we get to see him, he's just so, he's so over the top, but... He actually has some depth to him now that you see that he is, you know, trying to redeem himself and trying to be a better person, but he screws it up. It's kind of like uh, um, uh, uh, Incorruptible by Mark Wade, where um, uh, Max Damage was just trying to be a good guy by doing the opposite of what he would normally do and how that didn't really work out. And it's kind of like the way Negan operates, too, because, as he said in the past, he doesn't feel much since, you know, he lost Lucille, and you know, we, we read about that, and here's Negan. And after the apocalypse and watches so many people die, he realized he had to be a bastard to keep everyone alive. And unfortunately, the bad stuff that went along with that, he does show regret for that. And, you know, Rick opened his eyes. It would be fantastic to find out, you know, to see when Negan finds out what happened to Rick. So, but anyway, that's down the line. There's story possibilities. I'm sure Kirkman has already thought about it. But what did I think of this issue? What would I rate it? I'm going 12. I'm going 12 because after what I said at the beginning of this uh, this video, when I talked about how the spark was gone, something like this, it brought me back. It, it made me that happy. It's so nice to read something that's just like, yeah, and you're loving every second of it. Knowing, and like I said, I knew where it was going with some of this. I wasn't really too surprised with anything, but it was the ride not the destination and i loved every second of the ride so as always thanks for watching if you can get your hands on this pick it up you know your local comic shop they need all the help you know just like everyone else right now that's hurting because of the virus you know your lcs go down give them you know give them some money uh pick this up because they'll get all the profits and that'll help them so as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time